We're going to look at how you could analyze your spend in CloudWatch across your organizations, across your regions, across accounts. Uh, we're going to use that uh, to query S3 buckets and also CloudWatch logs inside. So there's multiple ways you can query the same data. So I'm going to show you both. You are using CloudWatch. From one day to another, you have a spike. There is spike in usage. So you are worried about that spike in usage because it's, of course, the usage is generating costs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what is the volume. Basically, you have an idea of the volume of the amount of requests, but you don't know who is generating this request behind the scene. And this is what you need to understand because you want maybe to verify, is it normal? Should I stop it? Is it an error? Is it a mistake? And this is this is what you, you, you are trying to, to find out, right? That's correct. So before July 2nd, I used to have uh, maybe 20, 30 API calls per day. But post uh, July 2nd, I have 20,000 APIs per day. So oh, I wow. So it's really, it's really ramped up, right? So yeah, we need to figure out what's happened. Yeah. So the first thing is uh, the prerequisite for this is to set up a CloudTrail in your account, and you have to turn on the data events. So let's start with CloudTrail. Got the Cost Explorer running. Uh, it's going to be the current current month, granularity daily, dimensions as API operation, as Benjamin has mentioned. So if you look at my account, I got a $3 spend on GetMetic data. So the, if you scroll down, all you could see is the API operation and the cost, but you don't have the caller. You're not sure who's making the call, which application, which IP address. So the way we used uh, CloudWatch Logs Insights is to narrow it down. So, so it's something specifically known by the security team. That is, that is correct. Uh, by default, your cloud trail would have management events turned on. But for this specific use case, uh, you should turn on data events. And turning on data events is at a cost. So uh, ensure to look at the pricing page before you turn this on. So I'm going to create a test trail in my account. I'm going to select S3 bucket. Uh, get turn off. KMS encryption, but this is recommended to turn it on, but I'm going to turn it off for the demo. On the CloudWatch logs, this is optional. This is going to incur extra cost if you turn it on. So, And is this the new feature, or is this something that already existed, the CloudWatch the, logs optional? This was, this already existed in the past. Okay. So the same data, the same events can be sent to S3 bucket and CloudWatch log group. So it's up to the user which stream they want to send it to. So I'm going to select an existing email. So select tags and then click next. On the event section, I'm going to select management events and also data events. So if you scroll down to the data events section, you're going to see the sources. This is a new source which was added a month ago. I'm going to look for CloudWatch metric. Ah. So if your use case is to investigate a different service, uh, you could find that in the list. There's a bunch of new features being added every time. So I'm going to select. And can you have multiple um, uh, data event types? You could. You should switch to uh, the advanced settings. This is the okay. basic, basic selector. OK. So you would see my, uh, my input is data events, and it's going to be CloudWatch metric. You could add multiple uh, data events here. Click Next. You're going to review your page. Uh, so you're going to have a cloud trail enabled with data events. Optional log group, that's enabled. You do have management events. And then on the data events, you have CloudWatch metric. Right. That's, what we, that's what we need for the session. OK. Most important thing, you have the CloudWatch metric. Create trail. We are investigating CloudWatch thing. So this activity is tracked in, inside CloudTrail, but the, the CloudTrail activity, we are going to dump it back in CloudWatch logs. That's correct. Okay. Ah, OK. And the thing, and just to clarify again, I know we're saying the word CloudWatch like 50 times, everybody. Stick with us. Uh, the, the thing we're looking for is the API calls of uh, CloudWatch, right? Yeah. It's the thing is that we are using CloudWatch to diagnose CloudWatch. That's <laughs> the funny thing. So I already have some queries saved on my account. So I'm going to click on the first query. 
This is basically looking for event sources monitoring, which is CloudWatch. I'm going to count the number of calls by event name, uh, the user on IP address. IP address will tell you who's making the call. You know, you could narrow down the exact resource in your account. Uh, the account ID, the AWS region, and user agent. Yeah, and maybe we can explain also why it's interesting and important to have the IP address. It's because because we are talking about API consumption of AWS services, it's generally external sources who are generating these calls. They are not necessarily resources inside your AWS account. It could be third-party software, partner software generating these calls. So that's why having the source IP address is super interesting. And that would is... people be able to work backwards from that source IP? So for example, could you give us an example of a third party that might be, I don't know, I don't want to name and shame any third parties, but would there be, would you be able to find out that information easily about where it's coming from? Well, it's, who, yeah, I mean, we, we, I, I think uh, we, we have um, monitoring tools with which we are partnering and it's uh, really, they are named inside our documentations. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be one which is super famous among our customers, Datadog, and it's mm -hmm. documented uh, that Datadog is using and is leveraging CloudWatch APIs. So that's something that could come up in the, in the, in the, uh, in the results. So that's one example, but it could be uh, uh, homemade uh, third party software. Uh, mm -hmm. no, well, it's not third party, third party if it's homemade, but you, you understand the logic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, we're, so we've got all of our logs, we're putting them in CloudWatch logs, and then we're running the query. And if you guys have, you remember, if you've seen this episode before, we did an episode a while back showcasing this log insights page. Um, I'll link to it below on YouTube as another episode. So we'll go into detail about that. But um, the query that you got, did you write this or was this provided by uh, Amazon on the kind of AI generator of it? I had to write it. It's a simple okay. query. But... And we've already, that's one of the ones we've got on here as well. So uh, if you want these queries and want to try it yourself, then you can check out the blog on community. We have all these queries that we have today so you can use them. So in the output, as the query is running, you're going to have results loaded. Uh, it's going to aggregate the data. So let me expand. So as you can see, the top contributors are getmetic data in my account. I would see the user ARN. I will also get the source IP, where it's coming from, which account in my organization is contributing to the cost, uh, the region flag, and the user agent. This is also critical to investigate yeah. which exact user is making the call. Okay. Uh, you see, you have the example that I uh, that I uh, explained. There is AWS internal, when it's internal resources, internal services, and we can assume where user agent is something different that it, it's external. It's so EDP. AWS internal, yeah. would that be like another AWS service? Like EC2? It could be another like AWS service. Okay. That's good. Okay. And then this AWS CLI, now that is from an application, I would assume? That's correct. I was running an application just to demonstrate uh, this spike. Right. Okay. And would the going, because you made it, so you, you probably know, is the CLI command or the Python, um, whatever it is in there, is it a kind of call to CloudWatch to get information? Is that what it's doing? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that again? Sorry, as in when you're running the application to generate the spike for mm -hmm. the demo, what is it actually getting from CloudWatch? What's the API uh, call doing? It's it's the uh, get metric data API. I'm just pulling uh, metrics from my account. Ah, okay. So metrics such as EC2 metrics or another metrics of some other. Yeah. It's like, uh, can you tell me what is the current CPU usage of my EC2 instance? This is what get metric data does. Uh, that okay. is correct. So Okay, so we're figuring out. And so also, uh, so I'm really drilling into this because these are the kind of questions that I know my customers going to ask me in the future. So when we have the user identity ARM, would things like that, you can see different service roles and different Isengard kind of different people. So would one of them often be, we mentioned Datadog earlier, love Datadog. Would one of them be like a role maybe that Datadog, that someone has deployed in the account so Datadog can get the data? Get the data? <laughs> 
is that how we might know? Would it be something like that? Would it have to be a role in the account that would use that? Uh, that is correct. Some third party services use their own name in the I IM role. So that's a unique way to identify the resource. I think I have that in my account. You can see data driving integration. Ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that would um, also help you. Narrow down the search. Okay, perfect. I do have a few queries saved. Uh, so okay. let's look at other queries. Uh, so this is for visualization mode. Uh, it's going to get your bar charts and find the top contributors. So it's basically the same query. I removed a bunch of fields in here. So if I look at visualization, I'm going to select bar or maybe pie chart. Right. So this is going to tell me 98% of my API calls in my account are from Catmetic data. So this also you know, gets you a different perspective of your spend and usage. And oh, that's, that's cool. nice. So I got one get dashboard API. I got a thousand get data APIs in my account. And this is for the time frame that I've selected. And so for the Athena, where before we, we're gonna talk about setting up the table as well, so people can do it at home, right? That's correct. The first step is to create a table based on your partitions. Uh, so I have a query that's built already. So I'm going to, as you can see, I don't have tables in my account, zero tables. I'm going to click run. And while that's running as a reminder, it's in the blog that's going to be in the link below. So I got my table created. And the next thing is run your own query uh, to get the exact same fields. So I'm basically counting the number of APIs by event name on IP region and user agent. Click run. So you should see similar data, what you've seen on CloudWatch logs insights. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same columns, uh, event name, ARN. It's, it's going to show me infra monitor as a top contributor, source IP, account ID, which region, and the user agent. Yeah, okay, so we have the similar similar results, but f f for the audience, maybe to understand correctly, in the first scenario we had, so we provisioned and recreated the trail in Cloud Trail, uh, who is going to record the CloudWatch activity, and we were sending the results of this activity of Cloud Trail back into CloudWatch log. That's the reason why you were able to use CloudWatch Insights in order to pull CloudWatch logs and show you this activity. In that scenario, we don't need CloudTrail to activity to get back into a CloudWatch log because we are using Athena. Is that correct? That is correct. That's an optional uh, setting that you have, uh, sending the data to CloudWatch logs. So if I show you my trial settings again, Select trails. Yeah. Show you uh, the trailer that I created. So this is where the data is stored. This is an S3 bucket where my organization trail events are available. And this is an optional setting that I've used just oh. to demonstrate. Ah, yeah. Okay. It's so you don't have to have that one. Yeah, in order to use the, the, the powerful uh, the, the power of the log insights feature and and specifically the Shaitanya showed that you can even ask your question within the tool saying, okay, can you eventually can you show me get metric data? No, you can ask your questions. But now uh, you can use it, yeah, you can you can if you want, not using this CloudWatch log uh, uh, option and then go through Athena. That's correct. So that's interesting. And it's cheaper as well, I guess. That is correct. You could go straight to Athena, uh, not use CloudWatch Logs Insights. Uh, but if you're comfortable with Insights queries, uh, you know, use the power of App Insights. You could go for it. Uh, another important setting on the Cloud Trail is make sure to enable multi region trail because if you want to find which okay. region the costs are coming from, and this setting is to enable all data events across your accounts in the organization. Question, can I keep the trail but stop the activity in order to keep it aside? You could. You could turn off the data events on your existing trail, but keep the management events turned on. OK, okay so we have to free. go in and edit that, right? That's correct. So I could uh, let me go back to my test trail that I've created. I'm going to click on Edit. 
uh, ah. uh, it should be on the data events added page. Yep. Okay. So I'm, ah, gonna turn off, I'm gonna turn off the data events, save changes. So the moment you do this, there's gonna there's not gonna be data events pushed to CloudWatch Log Group or your S3 bucket. It's gonna stop right away. Okay. Perfect. Okay, good to know. All right, perfect. Perfect. So and I will take that down. So let's go through a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, um, it would be nice to have some sample of the queries from AWS published somewhere of logger documentation. We've already been discussing this. So I just shout out that there is a handy link that we have this. And if you don't know, after episodes, we write a summary of them on the community uh, keys database optimization uh, channel. So go and check that out. 